In Dominica's electoral system, registered voters must go to the polls every five years to elect a new government. This process requires the use of secure boxes to confidentially host these ballot slips or votes. These boxes are called ballot boxes and effective this year's elections, a new type of ballot box is being introduced. This is to ensure a higher level of security and accountability in the voting process. I'm Jana Hector and this concerns you, so stay with me as we take an inside look. These boxes are of top industry standards at this time and are used all over the world. A highlight is their added security. Let's get closer. These translucent boxes feature three seals with serial numbers and two locks in addition to two signed paper seals for maximum security and accountability at every level. Okay, so we've been introduced to the new ballot boxes. Let's now look at how this concerns you when you enter the voting booth. This is a blown up ballot paper sample. The presiding officer will fill in these blanks, your voter registration number and his initials. The consecutive number and polling date would have already been printed on the ballot paper. The names of the candidates are listed alphabetically on the left side of the ballot paper with their symbols on the right side of their names. When you enter the room, you will find three election officials as well as candidates' agents who will ensure balance and fairness at each polling station. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. sir. Can you please state your name and address clearly? Donald Langford, Okay. Okay, Mr. Langford. I, have, I want to first instruct you that before I give you your pilot paper, you're supposed to ink. And while you're inking, I will instruct you as to the procedure. The election officials will confirm your registration and retrieve your voter registration number from the list. Now we have three candidates on this ballot form. Bishop Conrad D, whose symbol is the bicycle, O'Neill Francis, whose symbol is the boat, and Robinson George, whose symbol is the car. You are to mark your cross by any of the candidates on this ballot form for whom you desire to vote a cross by any of the candidates, Bishop Conrad D, the bicycle, Olin Francis, the boat, and Robinson Judge, the car. You're going to take the ballot paper and go across. There is a pencil where you mark your cross and you bring back the ballot to me the same way that I gave it to you folded. You will be instructed to dip your thumb in a bottle containing indelible ink prior to receiving a ballot paper to indicate that you have voted at this election. Now, you the voter only have one job, to make your X as neat and clear as you can without touching the lines. It is especially important that you do not mark your cross beyond the lines. When that is done, the top part of the ballot paper with the polling information is torn off and the bottom half with just the part that was marked remains folded and is then placed in the ballot box. There, now you've done your civic duty. At the end of the day, the presiding officer now has to empty out the ballot box to count the ballots in the box. So you have to open one lock. Right with your scissors to cut the tie. So secure it is. Then the seal that is placed at the close of the day is removed. It can be torn off. So that the cover all the the ballots in the box is turned over on the table for the presiding officer to come to balance in the presence of the candidates, agents, and any elector who is available. And the 
the polo clock and the system polo clock will be the official um, tally clocks. So when it is poured out and it is shown to all present that the box is empty, then the counting of ballots begin. When you have done all the all the, the tallying and done all the paperwork, they are they are provided also provided with um, envelopes and they are written what's supposed to be in, in uh, put in them. All that is placed in a large envelope and returned in the ballot box. Again, when that is done, the ballot box has to be resealed. All, all other stationery um, provided has to be placed back into the box because so this has to be returned to the returning officer. So. so the boxes are now sealed back, padlocks put on. Also, we're putting on the ties. Now there are, two, there are two seals that they have to use. One is to seal the lid. It seals, it seals the lid so that no one can tamper it unless they, they break that seal. As well as you put a seal on the box in order to seal the box as you did in the morning. Now those present including the candidates and agents and the um, election officers. Um, and in addition to that, the police officer has to sign saying that the box has been sealed in their presence. When this is done, the presiding officer now transports these boxes to the returning officer's office. When all boxes that are counted for, they are now placed in the police station for security overnight until the following morning when the returning officer has to do the final count. The next morning, after being securely stored overnight and before the final count, the seals must be broken again by the returning officers and election clerks to conduct the final count of the ballots in each box. When the final count is complete, the returning officer confirms the results for transmission to the electoral office. After the elections, ballots remain in their boxes in the electoral office vault for a period of a year unless there are any court-sanctioned queries.